The focus of this conference has been to try and get our ECRs to engage, to come, to participate, to meet, if you like, the well-established and, and great and good of the anaerobic digestion world. Either at this moment for safety, hydrogen and oxygen, it looks like a, a very explosive, but it is. They calculate that per gas methane you produce, you would need two cubic meters of water to cool it down. and the solids end up in the reactor and degrade and then generate the gas later. So We speculate that the ammonium in the biogas actually promote the initial growth. Because the number of bacteria in the tree holes is much smaller. So th 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 there's like 10 to the 4 bacteria per mil. As I say, on greenhouse gas emissions reductions because that ultimately is, is the priority. Can we exploit this, uh, this uh, phenomena into our uh, reactors? Well done, Thank you very much. A great poster, I loved it. Yeah. Thank you. Then what we're able to do, because of the increase in particle size, is use conventional filtration techniques. I would like to say iron is a very interesting cheese element, as many uh, researchers have already pointed out. Here's 50 micrograms, micrograms per liter, and here you have 10 micrograms per liter. Also for the production of fertilizer type products. So they wanted to have a granular process at the back end of the dry digester. If that isn't addressed, the reactor can go along and crash and sour. They're cheap, and you can tune them to absorb any frequency you like. So you can put them over your existing silicon well, we couldn't have done any of this without the BBSRC support. Charles, uh, Angie and Louis, they've done a great work uh, on this network, I believe. It's the, it's the last meeting. So, yeah, 